In this Halloween episode, let's talk about witches. <laughs> when I think of Halloween and when I was a kid, the first image that comes up is a witch. Witches riding on a broomstick, usually passing in front of a full moon with a black cat somewhere in the scene. That's what spooked me every Halloween. When I was downtown at the Halloween parade or trick-or-treating, I was always glancing up to stay ahead of any witch that might be on my trail. Most of everything I knew about witches came from The Wizard of Oz. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog, too. <laughs> I didn't learn until much later that witches never had any flying monkeys. And I always kept my scout canteen full and with me on those nights because I learned how to take care of a witch. <laughs> you person, friend, look what you've done. Later films such as The Witches of Eastwick in 1987 provided further fodder, <laughs> try to say that three times, fodder to increase our angst on Halloween. Who are you? Just your average horny little devil. That was all fantasy. Witchcraft, on the other hand, has a very real and very dark history. Witches, or things like them, have been haunting our dreams since early man began keeping records. In the late 1500s, a Scottish man went to officials claiming that his wife had been bewitched. He wanted revenge on a group of women that he had had problems with. The perplexed officials called in the Scottish King James to help settle the problem. Now, James considered himself an honest and learned monarch and espoused that he believed in witchcraft that all care should be taken to establish the guilt of accused witches beyond any doubt. And with this in mind, James published a book entitled Demonology in 1597. It was later published in England when James ascended to the English throne as James IV. Now, even though the book cautioned the careful judgment and the prosecution of witnesses, it also established that such a practice was real if a person should be convicted of witchcraft, the penalty of death was to be assigned. The book, therefore, had a falling communication stream, and as such was misused by some people. Notably, Matthew Hopkins in 1644. Hopkins was a devout Christian and believed that God had given him the task of hunting down witches. He took the name of Witch Hunter General. He is believed to have brought on the execution of several hundred persons. He had used torture to exact confessions from several people and was later brought down for using the practice since it was illegal. Witch hunting eventually crossed the Atlantic to colonial America. The infamous Salem witch trials began during the spring of 1692 after a group of young girls in Salem Village, Massachusetts claimed to be possessed by the devil and accused several women of being witches. A special court convened in Salem to hear the cases and the first convicted witch, Bridget Bishop, was hanged that June. Eighteen others followed Bishop to Salem's Gallows Hill. While some 150 more men, women, and children were accused over the next several months. Witch ending eventually died out, but it brings the question of who did the most harm? The accused witches? Are witch hunters. And what do you believe? Are witches real? Or are they simply an artifact of an overactive imagination? See, I actually believe in them because I've come into contact with several over the years. 